Hey guys, what's up? Z here and welcome to Z Reviews Tech. I have in my hands the Yumi Plus E, the cheapest phone in the world currently with 6GB of RAM. And not only that, it's also the first phone in the world to use the new MediaTek Helio P20 processor. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Yumi Plus E. Oh, and the answer is Aristotle, by the way. I know it's kind of confusing right now, but you'll get it later. Yumi has been firing phones out left and right rapid fire, and this Yumi Plus E, where the E stands for extreme, it is a lot more extreme than the original Yumi Plus. It has the Helio P20 processor, it has the 4000 million hours of battery, and it has 6 gigabytes of RAM. However, it does face stiff competition from the Redmi 4 Prime, and I know what you're thinking, why compare a phone with 3 gigs of RAM compared to the other with 6 gigs of RAM? And the answer is RAM is not everything. And you'll see later in this review why these two are fierce competitors. So first is the build quality of this phone. And the Yumi Plus E feels way better than the Redmi 4 Prime, even though both these phones are made of metal. The Yumi Plus E just has better attention to detail, closer tolerances, and overall it feels better in hand than the Redmi 4 Prime. Not a knock against the Redmi 4 Prime, mind you. It is also very well made, but the Yumi Plus E is just made better. However, Yumi used aluminum as well, which means that the body is really easily scratched, so I really do recommend a case to with this phone. The phone is big-ish. It's not too wide, about the same width as the Yumi Super, but it is pretty tall, so it's hard to reach the top of the phone with just one hand. On the front, we have the home button at the bottom, which doubles as a fingerprint sensor. Also, to be honest, if this phone was just made in regular silver or even gold, it would look really ordinary, but making it Onyx Black was a genius move because this phone looks really, really good in this color. And with Apple making black phones as well, Chinese phone makers were sure to follow. One thing I do dislike though is that the top and the bottom strips of the phone are a different shade of black compared to the body, which does make it a tiny bit uglier, but nothing too great. So the display is a full HD LTPS display and it does its job pretty well. It's not the best, mind you, but then again, the gap between the best screens and, you know, mediocre slash good screens, that gap is pretty small. The pixels are clear and sharp and the screen is lively. The max brightness of the screen doesn't really go that high. It goes up to around 400 to 450 nits, which is enough to use in sunlight, but in direct sunlight, you're gonna have a little bit of difficulty seeing the screen. We don't have Gorilla Glass or Dragon Trail protective glass on this phone, but we do have T2X1 protective glass, which is also better known as Dynorex. I think I'm pronouncing that properly. In practice though, Dynorex glass is pretty much about as strong as Gorilla Glass, so you don't really have to worry about the screen getting scratched or whatnot. Yumi started using the AW8738 audio chip in the Yumi Super and have continued using it in many of their high-end phones, including the Yumi Plus E. And this audio chip in the Yumi Super produced some above average sound and we get the same above average sound here as well. Sound quality is pretty much what I expected from this chip. Mids and highs are pretty good. There is some bass, but not a lot. Audio volume is also not bad, but not as loud as some of the best flagships either. Here's some sample audio for you to listen to. So battery life is definitely going to be good with a 4000 mAh battery, but the main competitor is the Redmi 4 Prime, which has recently just blown everyone's socks off with the battery life on that phone, which can get like two days of heavy use, no problem. In which case, I highly doubt the Yumi Plus E can come even close to that with the Helio P20. So let's see how well it does. Real life, I was able to get six hours of screen on time over a 16 hour day with 15% left. This was web browsing, gaming, YouTube, and also snapping some photos. So definitely on the heavier side of use. This also means that the Yumi Plus E has better battery life than any Redmi to date, except for the Redmi 4 Prime, of course, which is definitely nothing to sniff at because beating a Redmi device is no easy feat. So to conclude, battery life is great. If it beats a Redmi 3, you really don't have a problem with this battery life. Even heavy users won't be able to kill this phone in just one day. There is also Pump Express quick charging if you need to charge your phone up in a pinch as well. So we have stock Android with no skin on it. There's pretty much no bloatware and no changes at all. And it's something I very much appreciate from Yumi, keeping the phone completely stock without trying to customize it to make it look more Yumi-like. 
The front-facing fingerprint sensor is not bad in terms of accuracy and speed. It's pretty much on par in terms of accuracy compared to my Z2 Plus or even the iPhone. But in terms of speed, it's actually noticeably slower than my Lenovo Z2 Plus. But it's nothing too great. It's definitely not enough to make me stop using the fingerprint sensor. It's about on par with the Redmi 4 Prime's fingerprint sensor speed as well. In terms of performance, I'll be comparing the Yumi Plus E to the Redmi 4 Prime because the Prime right now is the golden standard in terms of performance for mid-range devices. The Snapdragon 625 in that phone is really, really good. Performance-wise, the Yumi Plus E is silky smooth and multitasking is an absolute breeze because there is 6 gigabytes of RAM on this phone. However, I never used more than 4 gigabytes of RAM even with purposely testing this phone, opening every single app and game I could find. So with this Yumi Plus E, 6GB of RAM is definitely overkill and is most likely a marketing stunt, but it probably worked. So you compare this phone to the Redmi 4 Prime, and this phone is a tiny bit faster multitasking as well, most likely because the Redmi 4 Prime only has 3GB of RAM, and that extra gigabyte bumping it up to 4 would have definitely helped multitasking a lot on the Redmi 4 Prime. And also don't forget that MIUI takes up a ton of RAM as well. Gaming wise, the Yumi Plus E is on par with the Redmi 4 Prime. I didn't see any slowdowns even playing the most intense games on Android. So if you're getting this phone as a gaming device, you definitely can. The Antutu benchmark shows the Helio P20 and the 625 very close in terms of score as well. Connectivity is pretty run of the mill. You have 2G, 3G, 4G. Just make sure it works with your carrier before you buy it. It works on my carrier here in Toronto and I was getting 4G most of the time as well. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and GPS all work as expected as well. The camera here uses the Samsung 3L8 sensor, the exact same as the Yumi Plus, meaning that daylight shots are great, detail is preserved, and colors are accurate. Although you compare the HDR on this phone compared to the HDR on the Redmi 4 Prime, and the Redmi 4 Prime does have slightly more saturated and vivid colors. However, in low light situations, this phone, just like any other China phone, has a lot of trouble preserving detail in terms of low light shots. The front facing camera is actually pretty decent in good lighting conditions, but very bad in low lighting conditions as expected. And probably the biggest change in this phone compared to previous Yumi phones is the ability to record in 4K. It definitely records crispy video in good lighting conditions, but in bad lighting conditions, the quality again does go down pretty fast. Overall, the video camera here is actually pretty good. I was pretty satisfied with the quality of the video here. However, the colors are a tiny bit washed out, so it will be a little bit more difficult to fix color in video as opposed to a photo. Overall, the camera here is the weakest part of the device, but that goes without saying for pretty much any Chinese device. However, this is probably the best camera Yumi has produced yet. So the verdict. Do you know the saying, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts? I forget who said it. I think it was like some famous guy, but Pretty much that saying boils down to one word, synergy. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the Yumi Plus E is the pinnacle of synergy and every phone maker should aspire to do what the Yumi Plus E does, but what I am saying is that the Yumi Plus E has a lot more synergy within its parts compared to the Redmi 4 Prime. So here's what I mean. If you gave every specification in the Redmi 4 Prime a score and you did the exact same for the Yumi Plus E, the Redmi 4 Prime would win because, well, the price is cheaper. But you know what? I still prefer using the Yumi Plus E over the Redmi 4 Prime. But all that aside, I'm able to say all this stuff about Synergy because as a device reviewer, I have the privilege of reviewing multiple phones. But if I place myself in your shoes and I'm only able to pick one phone, I would still pick the Redmi 4 Prime because it has better battery life and it's a smaller phone and I prefer 5-inch phones. But I will say that I enjoyed using the Yumi Plus E a lot more than I enjoyed using the Redmi 4 Prime. All that being said though, the Yumi Plus E is still a great device with no weak points except for the camera and the Redmi 4 Prime also struggles with the camera. So if you have your heart set on getting the Yumi Plus E, you're going to get a good phone and you're also gonna get bragging rights because you have six gigs of RAM. So I don't know how much that's worth to you, but if it's worth something, then this one's for you. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Be sure to like this video and be sure to hit subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.